I got some more SIU apprenticeship program questions. So let's get right into it. Uh, question number one, I need a pen. I need a pen. Is that, that's a pencil. I need a pen. Question number one, is training carried out every day on the Freedom Star? It seems to me that that would be the only plausible way to get 365 days C time to become an AB. <clears throat> no. Training is not carried out every single day on the Freedom Star. Uh, for the only plausible way to get enough C days. So time in... Don't quote me, uh, I should probably ask, ask the school, but school days, cla or class days, I believe are either day and a half or like three quarter days or something like that. Like a three, I don't know. But uh, when you're doing your training, even during, I believe other courses, uh, matter in, what type of course it is, they actually give you partial days for being in class. So that's how that works out. I think I did the math one time on the whole program and I don't think I had the full 365, but you know, however the union and the apprenticeship program has it worked out, they have it worked out with the Coast Guard. So they, they give it to us. Uh, question number two. What's better? Get my STCW myself or through the SIU program? That's all up to you. Uh, I feel like I answer this question pretty often in various ways and various videos. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Um, 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 it all depends on your specific situation, whether you want to take on some student loan debt, or maybe you're young, your parents have told you they'll pay for your college or your trade school, or maybe you've saved up your own money to go to school. And that's the money you've saved up is specifically for classes. Then yeah, you could do it yourself. But for somebody that doesn't want to get into debt, doesn't want to take on student loans, uh, family is not family is not a option of help. Um, you know whether you're going to ask it or if they've told you to pay for it. If debt, student loans, which is debt, family is not an option. And if you just don't have the money saved up to do the classes yourself, then the apprenticeship is the best way to go because you're not you're paying for your your MMC your TWIC your passport that stuff which you already need to get into the industry um, but you're paying for that no matter what and then all of the certificates are you're getting for free through the program but <clears throat> you can pay out of pocket or take on debt or ask your family for money and take the classes and get them faster than the program will give them to you. But then there's still the, the other side of, are you not joining the union or are you joining the union? If you're not joining the union, you got to go start searching for companies that are, that will hire you with no reference and no experience. If you are joining the union and you paid out of pocket to get the, the basic STCW courses, you're a C book seniority. So you're on the bottom. So it, it, I can't fully say whether it's better to do it yourself or through the program. It all matters on your specific situation that you're in. Question number three. Uh, great video. I don't know which one this was from. So great video. I've been learning a lot, getting all my documents together. Question is, does the union pay 
your apprenticeship wages while a student is in training in Maryland. I copy these down word for word for how people write them. So sometimes they don't really make sense, but the question is, does the apprenticeship, does the union pay your apprenticeship wages while a student is in training in Maryland? No, you're not getting paid to be at the school. You're there for free training. They're giving you a place to sleep, giving you three square meals a day, plus snacks if you want them. You could eat whatever you want as long, you know, there's meal hours, but you could eat as much as you want. And then there's always um, ways to make sandwiches, cereal, there's always snacks that you can eat, whatever. But they don't pay you to go to school. They give you, they, you can take on not hourly wages, but they offer if you want to volunteer to do jobs around campus, then they pay you, they give you an extra 20 bucks a month or something like that. I don't, I don't remember all the different jobs were entitled to different little extra amounts of money, but uh, no, they don't pay you while you're in school. Question number four. Do you have to shower with people? When I was there four or five years ago now, it was like a classic gym locker room shower where it was like a center pole with like six spouts off of it. So yeah, we all had to shower with each other. Some guys wore shorts, some guys didn't wear shorts, some, you know, um, some people just tried to plan their showers of like when other people weren't showering. Some people wouldn't shower in the morning they go in and shower at lunch because nobody else was showering. Some people had jobs, like for me, I had took on a gate guard duty job. So my shift was typically like a midnight to 4 a.m. So for me, I could shower in the middle of the night if I wanted. Uh, but since I've been there, they did renovate the place. So there are personal stalls to shower in. You still are showering in the same room as other people, but you're in your own personal stall. They're pretty nice. I think they, they had finished renovating like some of it when I was there in third phase. Pretty nice. Pretty nice setup compared to what I was dealing with in first phase. Uh, I think I have one more question back here. Question number five. No, wait, wait, wait. Question number five is going to be During phase two and four, can you do more than 120 days? So in phase two, they don't necessarily give you the option. You're there for 90 days But here's the the crappy part is You have to have at least 90 days. So if you pull into port and you're at 88 days and the next port is five days away, then you have to do that extra five days to get your, your 90 days to go back to school. Um, but I haven't heard of anybody that voluntarily wanted to do more days in phase two because you're getting paid an apprentice wage, which was anywhere between four and seven dollars an hour. So doing more time in phase two isn't really beneficial. You want to get back to school as fast as you can. That way you can then go out um, for your fourth phase where you will get paid an actual wage. Um, and then you can do extra time. I think I did like a week extra time. I knew guys that did a month extra, but again, you need at least a minimum of 120 days in fourth phase your fourth phase shit, because if you get less than that, then you have to go back out until you have that 120. It's part of the program, back to that, that deal with the Coast Guard to be able to get your, your certificates. Um, but yeah, when, when you do third phase, you're gonna be coming a OS or a wiper, and then you go out to your fourth phase shit. When you finish third phase, you have one year 
to get back to the school to finish the program. If you decided to go out for your fourth phase and you were out for, you know, eight months straight because they let you do that, which a lot of ships aren't going to let you extend that long. But if they did let you do that and then you got off and you took a few months of vacation and overlapped from when you were last at school, if you go past the one year, then you have to retake uh, phase three. But some ships will allow you to extend a little bit if you want to do like an extra month or something. Uh, but again, ideal you can make the money, but ideally you want to get back to school as fast as you can because then you can take your final fifth phase and you either become an AB or an oiler and then you're done. You're done with the program and you're off starting your career making your money. Uh, that's going to be actually I have one more and that'll be it. Would someone interested in doing the apprenticeship program have trouble getting approved for the MMC if they are prescribed ADHD medication? I've answered this a couple other times involving medications. Uh, ADHD medication, I, I assume it's probably going to be like the military where I had friends that were prescribed ADHD but they wanted to go into the Navy or the Army and what they had to do was go a certain amount of time without that medication being prescribed to them and then get a waiver saying, you know, I, I do not need this medication anymore to function so they would let them join the military. Uh, but there's a lot of waivers that you can do. A lot of guys are need medication on the ships. And so they're, you might be able to get a waiver for your ADHD if it's, you know, a serious problem and it's not like a, a problem. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed hit that subscribe button, like comment, share, and I'll see you in the next video. Oh, if you're interested in these Q&As, go check out my Patreon account. The link will be down below. I'm only doing these SIU apprenticeship program Q&As specifically because I want to share those with everybody. But general maritime industry questions and even other SIU questions, um, they're all down in my Patreon. So go check those out. Links down below.